Hi, my name is Demelza. Please like and subscribe. My first memory of mom is of her voice. She'd sing lullabies to me every night, and it was the most beautiful sound in the world. The minute she stopped, I'd start screaming for more. By the time I was one, I could hum every lullaby perfectly. Dad would play the grand piano, and I'd jump onto his lap and press the keys, delighted by the sounds I made. On Dad's 30th birthday, there was a grand celebration at our mansion. In the middle of it, I climbed onto the table and started singing the birthday song. Suddenly, a hush fell over the room. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear daddy. Happy birthday to you. When I was finished, I looked around in surprise to see grown men crying. Oh my god, she has the voice of an angel. I always had a feeling Demelza was gifted. I'm so proud of you, darling. My parents hired the best musicians and vocal coaches for me, and there was no stopping me after that. At every party, I'd put on a show for our guests, and I'd make them pay me too. My life was perfect until one day when everything changed. When I was in the third grade, Dad had just returned from a business trip, and I stopped short when I saw a scrawny little girl get out of the car too. She was trying to hide behind Dad, but he gently pushed her forward. Demelza, this is Isabel. She's your sister, and she's going to live with us now. Will you take care of her? I looked into her scared, dark eyes and immediately took her hand. Always, but the day Isabel walked in, a dark shadow was cast over our happy home. That evening, we overheard a huge fight between my parents. You've broken my heart, and now you've brought a reminder of that to live with us? She can't stay here. I won't raise a child that isn't mine. She has nowhere to go. Her mother's gone. I know you hate me right now, but please don't take it out on her. She's just a kid. I didn't want Isabel to hear this, so I said, Come on, I'll play something for you. What's your favorite song? I didn't fully understand what was happening, but one thing was clear. Mom hated Isabel. She pretended like Isabel didn't even exist. But Dad and I adored her, and we more than made up for Mom's ice-cold attitude. But in the eighth grade, we got some news one day that turned our worlds around. Dad had been in a terrible car accident, and he was gone. We were all devastated. But mom just shut herself up in her room for weeks. One night, I was reading a story to Isabel when mom suddenly barged in. What are you doing in my daughter's room? You're just a poor maid. Um, mom, are you okay? She's not a maid. This is Isabel, remember? How could I forget her? Everything bad that's happened to us is her fault. I stared in horror at mom as Isabel started to cry. Pack your things first thing in the morning, Isabel. You're going to be sleeping with the maids now. What? No, she's not going anywhere. Either she goes to the maids or the orphanage. This is her last night here. As mom was leaving, she suddenly pounced at Isabel, grabbed her stuffed bunny and threw it in the fire. No, my mom made that. Isabel <laughs> cried for hours and I hugged her to sleep. What had happened to my mom? The very next day, Isabel was shifted to the maid's quarters and made their helper after school. I was scared she'd be sent away, so I didn't fight with mom, but I'd sneak food to her and help her with her homework at night. And at school, we could always hang out together. But one day, I was really surprised to see mom marching into the principal's office. Mom, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm here to withdraw Isabel from school, of course. You can't do that. She has to go to school. Why? She's never going to be anything but a maid like her stupid mother. You don't need an education to sweep floors. As she turned around, I grabbed mom's wrist. If you make her drop out of school, I will too. And I'll tell everyone why. Are you sure you want everyone to know how you really treat Isabel, mom? Dad would be so disappointed in you. Mom looked shocked, then angrily pulled her arm away and left. I'd won this little battle, but God knows what she'd do next.
Things weren't great at home, but at least I had Eric. He was my boyfriend for two years and was just crazy about my voice. One evening when I was on a date with him, I suddenly started getting calls from Isabel. Come home right now. I ran home to a scene of complete chaos. Mom was tearing apart Isabel's room. What's going on? Your dad's watch is missing, and I'm going to search all the maid's rooms. And when I find it, I'm kicking out the thief for good. Just then, a servant came from another room, saying it was under Mom's personal maid's bed. Mom looked completely shocked to find out it was her, but she threw her bags out instantly. Some days later, it was Isabel's 13th birthday, and I snuck into her room with a cake. When she blew the candles out, I asked her what she'd wished for. I wished your mom was dead. Isabel, you don't mean that. She's, she's my mom. Isabel stayed silent and I got up to leave. I'd never seen that look of hatred on my little sister's face before. In the middle of all this drama, I had a huge audition coming up. A prestigious music academy was looking for talent from different schools and being selected would be a dream. But five days before the audition, I woke up with my throat hurting. I called out to the maid, but to my horror, my voice was gone. Mom rushed me to the doctor, who diagnosed me with laryngitis. What he said next left me shocked. Your voice will return to normal soon, but this is the end of your singing. If you strain your vocal cords too much, you could lose your voice permanently. I just couldn't believe it. On the day of the auditions, I slipped into the auditorium with Eric, feeling devastated. I wanted to be up on that stage more than anything. And then, one of the judges said, The last performer is... Miss Isabel. Wait, what? Isabel stepped onto the stage and started singing. You made me insecure. I was stunned. Her voice was beautiful. The judges gave her a standing ovation and said they'd be in touch with her soon. As everyone started to leave, I caught up with her. Isabel, that was amazing. But why didn't you tell me you could ever sing like that? She brushed my arm off angrily, her eyes blazing. You never asked. You just assume that you're the only one with any talent. But I guess that's something we both got from our father. It makes you unhappy, doesn't it? Why would you say that? I've always had your back, Isabel. Yet, I've been living as a maid in my dad's house for years. And you did nothing. You think sneaking me food makes up for how I'm treated? No, it doesn't. All it does is make you feel good about yourself. Isabel, I tried. You should have tried harder. I hate you, Demelza. As she stormed off, I felt heartbroken. As Eric walked me back home that evening, suddenly a cyclist came charging straight at him. I pushed Eric out of the way just in time, but he landed on the pavement hitting his head. I quickly called an ambulance, and after hours of waiting at the hospital, we were shocked to get the news. Eric was in a coma. The doctors were hopeful he'd wake up soon, but weeks turned into months, and before I knew it, a year had passed. I was almost done with high school, and Isabel was in her music academy on full scholarship, but we never spoke anymore. One day when I went to see Eric, I was shocked to see him sitting up in bed. Oh my god, you're awake! He gently pushed me away. I'm sorry, who are you? Eric, it's me, Demelza, your girlfriend. Can you sing? Yes, well, I used to, but then I got sick and had to stop, remember? No, I just know that my girlfriend sings beautifully. I couldn't move or see all these months, but she'd talk and sing to me often, and I, I could hear her. I know her voice, and it's not you. <gasps> Suddenly, my blood ran cold when I heard someone behind me. Babe, that was me. You could hear me? Isabel? Yes. Yes, it's you. She ran forward and hugged him, and then they kissed. Suddenly, I just lost it. I pulled Isabel by her hair. Are you completely crazy? You've been visiting my boyfriend and singing to him? Tell him you're lying. I am not. He's mine. Let me go, witch. And suddenly, she pushed me viciously and I went flying into a trolley. I attacked her and we went crashing straight into the machines. And the next thing we knew, we were both thrown out of the hospital. I turned furiously to Isabel. We're done. For good. You've become a hateful monster. I don't even know who you are anymore. But you're definitely not my sister. 
finally. And with that, she left. I went on a very long walk to clear my head. And by the time I got home, Isabel was gone. The next morning, mom discovered a lot of things were gone too, including dad's watch. I'm going to report her to the police. I'm going to... Mom, just stop it. She's gone. That's what you wanted since you first saw her, right? And so what if she took dad's stuff? It's hers too. Let it freaking go. A year later, I went off to university to study music. If I couldn't sing anymore, I could still play. In my final year, I was leaving the campus one day when I stepped on a newspaper. It had Eric and Isabel's face on the front page with the headline, Billionaire to Tie Knot in Two Weeks. Well, good for them. But just a few days later, I walked into a coffee shop and to my shock, I saw Eric there. And he was kissing a blonde girl that definitely wasn't Isabel. I just walked away. It wasn't my problem, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. And when her wedding day arrived, I just couldn't not do anything. Even if she hated me, she was my freaking little sister. And that's how I found myself bursting into the church and running like crazy down the aisle. Hold it, this wedding can't happen. As Isabel turned to look at me in horror, I ran straight at her and hugged her. I held onto her tight as she squirmed and shrieked. OMG, you psycho, get off me. I love you, Isabel. I'm not going anywhere till you listen to me. As Eric looked super mad and everyone stared at us, she dragged me off to a small room. What do you think you're doing, Demelza? Isabel, you can't marry Eric. He's a cheater. I, I saw him kissing a girl the other day. I swear, I'm not lying. You think I don't know about that? Well, I do, and it doesn't matter. I stole your man, and he'll take care of me. At least I got rid of you and your psycho mom, so just buzz off. Isabel, listen to me. You're just angry right now. I'm so sorry about everything. Mom was unbelievably cruel to you, and I should have fought harder. You deserved so much better, and you still do. Don't marry this jerk, please. Why do you care? Because you're my little sister, and I miss you so much. I had two things that I loved the most, my voice and you. I lost my voice for good, and I don't want to lose you too. Please forgive me and come with me. Oh, Demelza, I'm so sorry for all the horrible things I did to you. I thought I wanted to marry Eric to tease you, but I now realize that everything I've been doing in my life was to not end up alone. I just wanted to belong to someone. You belong to me. You're my family. I made a promise to dad to take care of you, and I will, always. And with that, we hugged each other and walked back to our home. Family always comes first.